morning. Um, I'm Councillor Heather Anderson. I'll explain a bit about my role here in a minute, but I want to welcome you all to this 60 minute webinar and um, building skills together. Building Skills Together is a new Scots refugee integration development project. It's funded by the European Union through its Asylum Migration and Integration Fund. The project aims to support highly skilled refugees into employment in the construction industry, and we work in partnership with WEA Scot -E Scotland, the Workers' Educational Association Scotland, and three councils, Dundee City, Fife and Clackmannanshire. My name is Councillor Heather Anderson and I'm the elected councillor for Coldside Ward in Dundee, but I'm here today in my capacity as convener in Neighbourhood Services. Neighbourhood Services in Dundee covers housing, construction, waste, recycling, parks, the environment, biodiversity, community education and community learning, and that's where you all come in. Um, I'm delighted to welcome you all here virtually. It's probably just as well we're online today because the weather in Dundee today is shockingly bad. It's always sunny in Dundee, but we've lost the, we've dropped the ball today. Um, so Dundee, like many local authorities across Scotland, has been supporting a humanitarian response and to our resettlement work. We're absolutely delighted to be able to welcome and offer refuge to those fleeing conflict in their own lands. It is absolutely right that we support those who, through no fault of their own, find themselves as refugees here in Dundee and in Scotland. Please be assured that we welcome you as new Scots and we hope to help you build your new lives here in our city and in our country. As Dundee City Council's Neighbourhood Services Convener, it has been my pleasure to meet some of you and hear about your concerns and hopes for the future. I'm only too aware of the challenges that Dundee and indeed Scotland faces around the provision of housing and new build housing in particular, caused partly by the skills shortage within the construction industry. This, that is why I've been so encouraged to hear about this innovative project which seeks to address that very problem. This project was instigated and led by Dundee City Council and aims to address the barriers that skilled refugees arriving in Scotland face when they're trying to access careers in construction. As already mentioned, it has involved staff from Dundee City Council, Fife Council and Clack Manninshire Council and the WA Scotland all working in partnership together. And I think, I think we've got about 10 local authorities involved in today's meeting. So that's great to be communicating with other local authorities. Um, now you've got to wave when you're introduced and I'm pleased to say that today we have Kirsty Forrester from Dundee so that people know who you are. Everybody knows who you are, Kirsty. Um, Lucy Wilson from Fife, nice to meet you, Lucy, and Archie Campbell from WEA. Hi, thank you, Archie. And um, we're also joined by Claire Cameron of the WEA. Thank you, Claire. Um, you're the education coordinator for the project and you've created um, the materials we're going to be hearing a lot more about later. You've supported the delivery of seven pilot projects across Scotland, both online and face to face. So we've got some tough questions for you about how that's going. Um, we'll also hear from Ian Clare. Is Ian there? I, Ian, I think it's Ian Clark. Should it be? Yeah. Ian Clark of IED Training. I met you at the event, Ian. Sorry, your name's written down wrong here. Um, so Ian Clark of IED Training, and you've worked to deliver the IOSH training to some of the adult learners involved. And finally, but absolutely not lastly, we have Ahmed um, on the call here who participated in one of the pilot project and received a certificate. So before we get started, I need to go over some of the practicalities. Um, we've time for questions at the end of the presentations, and I'd request that you put your questions in the chat, and Kirsty is going to keep um, an eye on those. Um, the webinar, webinar is being recorded, so please turn off your camera if you do not wish to be recorded. Um, and my understanding now is that we are seamlessly going to move to a 10 minute video and all the technology will work perfectly. So um, we hope you enjoy this 10 minute video sharing the highlights. Many of those resettled in Scotland through schemes set up in response to foreign conflicts are highly skilled individuals from a construction background, all of whom have the right to work in the UK but not necessarily the correct tickets to access construction careers. 
In 2018, Dundee City Council, who were working with Dundee and Angus College to help resettled adult learners access construction careers, did some research with colleagues in other local authority areas. The staff from Dundee found that lots of other places had also tried to do this type of work and that there was a lot of duplication, with local authorities translating the same materials and spending the same time trying to find out information about how to access the construction industry. The Building Skills Together project comes from that research and the work carried out by local authorities across Scotland to help new Scots use their skills in Scotland's construction industry. It is a new Scots refugee integration delivery project led by Dundee City Council who are working in partnership with Fife and Clackmannanshire Councils and WEA Scotland to help skilled refugees gain the certification they need to work in the construction industry. It aims to create resources to help people get into construction and at the same time demystify the process for local support workers. With funding from the Scottish Government and the EU Asylum, Migration and Integration Fund, partners have developed two training courses for beginner and intermediate students, which gives non-native speakers the language and knowledge they need to pass the CSCS operatives test. At the end of the project, these materials will be available to download free of charge to any individual or ESOL trainer across the UK to help adult learners pass the CSCS test. It is believed that these materials will also be of assistance to native speakers with literacy and numeracy barriers to their learning. Having passed an IOSH or REHIS health and safety test, and the CSCS test. Participants will be able to apply for their CSCS card and begin to apply for jobs in Scotland's construction industry. We have personally worked in the construction industry for over 30 years now, hoping to give some of that experience to the guys and benefit them in the the next steps of their journeys. Uh, The first step they're taking is to try and achieve their CSCS cards, uh, which is essentially it's a lot like a license to work on a construction site. My name is Abdul Hakim Afshin. Uh, I'm from in Turkey. Uh, I live in Dundee uh, for two years. Uh, before uh, I came to Scotland, I used it to the uh, white goods repair, uh, electrical uh, appliances repair, uh, plumbing, and construction. Cost- useful course I recommend to all uh, repairmen uh, and builders. I'm Ahmed Al-Kadami, I'm from Yemen and uh, I live in Glasgow, I've been in Scotland for two years, I've completed my master's studies in smart cities and communities uh, December the, the, the last year and now I'm uh, trying to apply for a job in in construction well i'm uh, hoping to find a job in uh, in uh, building uh, energy management you know why because this will be the, the, the right fit for me as a combination of my background in civil engineering and also my uh, uh, recent course in uh, in sustainability in smart cities and, and smart mobility and energy efficiency the people that we work with do not want to move into zero hour contracts, low pay jobs. These are people who are highly skilled and we have an industry that are telling us that they need these skills. So we need to find a way to make these industries accessible. I think one of the challenges has been trying to ratify their skills and find a way of them transferring their skills without formal qualifications. I think giving employers the confidence to take them on is also a huge challenge. I think we need to work hard with employers, um, not just taking them on, but also in how to support them and communicate with them once they're in the workplace. I think probably the main one would be the employer. Um, yeah, the the employer the lack of willingness to engage with the migrant community. 
the barriers for some of our learners are really, really difficult for them to overcome. And I think it's just, we, we need to be a voice for our learners because for a lot of them, they don't, they don't know who to talk to. They don't even, I think, realise that they are being discriminated against a lot of the time. And I think that this is, you know, it's shown us really that there is a lot of discrimination for our learners out there and that we need to really carry on working in partnership, carry on being a united voice to try and change things. The main challenge is, I think, learning English because the exam that the learners have to take is very difficult. It's very difficult for native speakers. So there's a lot of input that the learners have to do. Um, I think on top of the um, language skills that often are on beginner or elementary level, um, there's a lot of life that people have to juggle. Um, my learners have to either work, work night shifts. Uh, there's a lot of problems with childcare. Um, commute often, um, college sometimes as well. So in the course that we just had, um, the learners were really, really good at attending the classes on top of their lives. The impact of this project has given them the confidence uh, to learn all about health and safety in the construction industry, whether or not they go into um, a large construction company or work for a smaller company or even set up by themselves. They have learned things that they never knew about um, in their own countries. For example, um, our environmental regulations, um, certain health and safety laws that we have in this country. So they've deepened their knowledge, they've deepened their vocabulary in their specialist field and they've gained in confidence. Um, the exam that they take at the end of the course can help them get a better job and um, in a field that they're already familiar with, which they cannot do at the moment in the new country. I think the strength of the project has been the partnership working and the um, excellent support we've had from um, WEA. The tutors have been fantastic and they've, the learners have engaged very well. We've had very little dropout from a, a learner body that is generally quite hard to engage and retain. We've actually had a very little dropout and we're very, very happy with the number of people who are progressing through their tests, passing their tests, passing their IOSH and actually applying for their green cards now. I think it's been really good to work together. I think that uh, I have certainly learned a lot from working with other people who have got far more experience than me on projects like this. Strengths of the projects were definitely the materials. I think that first and foremost was very good. There was there was a great deal of depth, variety in the materials. So um, there was offering at, an, at, at a beginner level. There was also intermediate and advanced levels that I could have had access to had I had the learners for that. But for the levels that I was working with, it was very uh, comprehensive in terms of the activities they could engage with. There was a mixture of productive uh, tasks, which involved writing or speaking, alongside receptive tasks that were on the listening side, which were also additionally complemented with uh, with the exercise books that come from the construction industry. Yes, it's been really good to focus on something that is a real life skill and could be a proper improvement of our learners' lives. So um, working towards a qualification has been really, um, yeah, it's been really rewarding. And from my point of view, uh, one of my learners have already passed their exam, so I'm really happy for them. I'm looking forward to hearing from another learner as well and I'm sure they will pass as well. But one of the strengths of this project has been seeing local authorities and voluntary sector partners from across Scotland coming together to work uh, towards the same goal. And it's been great to see um, us working across geographical boundaries, which of course are, you know, don't exist for the people with whom we work um, or for the construction industry themselves. At the end of the project, we'd really like to be seeing the people that we work with move into meaningful employment. We've done a skills audit, so we know um, to what extent the learners have skills, whether it's joinery or painting, decorating, electrician, electricians, plastering. So we have a huge pool of very experienced skills tradesmen, as well as quite a few um, professional postgraduate engineers with project management experience. So I think we have a very talented pool of people there who are ready now to enter the Scottish workplace. These are highly skilled people 
who want to use their talents in Scotland to give back to the communities in which they live. Thank you very much for that. That was a really informative film. Well done to everyone who's involved in making that. Um, I think our next stage in the programme today is that we're going to undertake three short interviews and then we'll open up for questions. Um, so the first person that we're going to focus on is Claire, Claire Cameron. Um, thank you, Claire. And I've been um, given a, a, some questions to ask you to hopefully illuminate this process. Okay. So the, the CSCS card, what is it? Why is it important? Are there different types of cards and what do you need to do to get one? Well, what I'm going to do, I think the easiest way is if I show you a quick little presentation that I use for the learners, and that will give you an idea about how complex this is, especially for people who don't know anything about it. So if we start here, um, this is the, um, these are the different kinds of CSCS cards. These are health and safety cards for the construction industry. And uh, why do they need self and haste? health and safety cards because the statistics for accidents and injuries and long-term health conditions in the construction industry are second only to the agricultural industry. So there's a few um, sobering facts and figures there for you um, and the way to mitigate these accidents and injuries is to try and have everybody as well trained as possible in health and safety. So the card that we are um, aiming for our learners to get is the green card. Um, it's an, a labour and unqualified worker on a building site. And I appreciate that a lot of our learners do have skills, but a lot of these skills require um, three years at college or long apprenticeships, etc. So we are aiming to go the easiest route is to get them the green card and then they have various options once they're in the workplace. So how uh, there's a few other cards I'm going to show you so that you can see that it's not just a question of one card that's out there. Apprentice card, there's a skilled worker, a blue card, which we're hoping that our learners will be able to move into getting a skilled worker card, craftsman card and a manager card. Again, we hope some of our um, People on our courses will eventually be able to get a manager's card because they do have management experience in their own countries. Uh, so there are many different cards and the green card test is in two parts. So the first part is um, a, a practical sort of health and safety test course, and they can do it either through IOSH, the Institute of Occupation, Safety and Health. And you'll be hearing from Ooh. Ian Clark of IOSH, who has taken many of our students through the IOSH training successfully and they can also do um, the test with another organisation called REHES. Uh, so there's two routes for them to do this health and safety component. Now the other part of the test, and this is what I have been involved in, this is my course, is it's a computer test and the way I would discuss it is it's a little bit like the driving test theory test. Um, they have to go to a Pearson's centre and they do 50 questions in 45 minutes on a computer. There's certain languages that have a voiceover, um, unfortunately not Arabic. A lot of our learners are Arab, so Arabic speakers, so it's unfortunate for them they have to do it with an interpreter. But that is the test. So there's a preparation. It's very much like the driving test theory manual. There's a manual. And then there's a test book with 700 questions for the test. So that basically is how the test works. And there's lots and loads out there on YouTube practice tests and um, IOSH. Also, uh, they can do these um, components of the test uh, with an ITA funded by an ITA. So although we have funded our learners, um, because some of them are not eligible for ITA, um, if anybody is taking this project forward, uh, please don't be daunted because the payment for this IOS training can be made through an ITA. And the test itself is quite inexpensive. It's £22 and um, they book it online. And then when they do get their green card, that's £36. So it is money, but there's small amounts of money um, to get people into their tests. They can book online 
and they can have an interpreter for the first time. And then there's um, various options for people moving into management. But that doesn't really affect us today because we're just talking about the green ta the green card. Um, that right. I think I've probably answered the second question as well, haven't I? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but from what you're saying, Claire, the focus is on getting the first card to get onto the site and then yes. you could accelerate through the programme while you're on a construction site and you're working in that environment. With well, an on-site assessment, yes. Yeah, yes. To, the, to the red yes. and the blue cards. Yes. Um, what, you know, for someone who is trying to make this accessible to Arabic speakers, what were the, the main challenges in terms of the language and the comprehension for you that you've, you've managed to work with to, to make it accessible? I think the main challenges were that we have people with amazing practical skills and lots of experience, um, people with 20 years experience in construction industry in their own countries, but they don't have the formal qualifications that are required to work in their field on a construction site here. And the second thing is the language, although they have the knowledge, a lot of them have quite poor English language skills, not all of them, been extremely impressed by the level of language of some of our learners, um, but a lot of people have quite basic English. And the large challenge is that the test book and the test questions are written in quite inaccessible English. They yeah. wouldn't even pass the plain English um, campaign test, you know. So I've had to simplify the content, sim simplify the language, but keep the content the same. Okay. And I have a note here that there's something like 700 questions that you were looking at. How, how long did it take you to distill that into this course? How much work did that take? A long time and it was quite daunting because I don't have a knowledge of the construction industry. I've learned a lot as I've come along, but I have I had a lot of experience in materials writing. So I just kept to the formula, grouped grouped topics together. I looked at uh, and I, I analysed questions and saw if there were any hints and tips um, that there's certain types of questions that we know that X is always the right answer. So I've helped them that way, given them a little bit of test strategies along the way as well. Yes. And can I Finally, the second last question, but what kind, what types of materials have you developed? Is it all accessible online or? Yeah. Yes, yes. Now, we haven't quite got to the stage of um, having it hosted. We're still looking for a, the best platform to host it on so people can find it really easily. But I'm going to just very quickly show you the uh, resources that we have done. We've had a designer design these for us. Very happy with them. So these are are all everything I divided into topics. These are the topics on the in the test. So environmental waste control and safety signs, manual handling. So we have all of these um, topics and we've got, for example, I'll show you a typical presentation, a typical test. They're all in PDF, so they're all copyable and they can all be um, you know, downloaded very easily. So this is one about asbestos, for example. So it will give you all the information about asbestos that they will need in the test. So we go through slides and graphs and uh, give people all the information. Of course, we've got a lot of difficult words. I mean, mesothelioma, yes. but they need to know that word for the test. They need to know asbestosis. But you know, we've been very, very good at learning quite technical words during the course. And we have little videos, so we click on and we can watch um, videos just very quickly, for example. That will be a video um, from, um, you know, many, many building safety videos out there on YouTube. So we have um, well, lots it's of very, information. Yes. So, so very comprehensive. And it's that thing. Uh, I like that idea that you didn't know about the building trade. So you've had to approach this as a learner in the same way. And that's probably helped you um, translate the information because you've had to understand all the jargon and uncode it, you know. So Exactly, exactly. So I've given them everything. So looking at the test questions, I have looked at everything that's in the test that they need to know. And so there's little videos, you know, how to wear the protective equipment and I won't play it. We haven't got time. Um, yeah. There's a government compensation. And then they've got the questions. So these are some sample questions from the test paper. So we do, do these together as a group. And then uh -huh. I send them away 
to do the actual test questions on this topic. Right. Once we finish the lesson. Very comprehensive. Can I ask you um, how many people have passed um, the CC, the CSCS test as a result of the project? Yes, well, what we've had, we've engaged with over 50 learners. We've got um, 29 people have passed the IOSH component. I'll take this off, sorry. 29 people have passed the IOSH component and 10 people have passed the, the REHIS test. Um, but that's the health and safety courses. So that's a total of 39 people have passed the health and safety courses, which is a very, very good very result. High, yeah. Very, very huge, huge, um, you know, round of applause really for Andy, who worked very hard on the IOSH um, courses with quite low level learners, you know, um, assisting them and supporting them. And then the CS test, the total test, we've had eight people pass so far and they've either got their green cards or in the process of applying. And we've got another 25 in progress. Um, they've done the course, they've done their IOSH, and they're just waiting for the interpreter facilitated test. The interpreters take a long time to set up, so they're ready to roll, they're ready to do their test, but they're just waiting for the um, administration of the CSCS to do the test. And um, that's it. Thank, so, thank, yeah. you. Mm -hmm. thank you very much, Claire. That's really comprehensive and obviously a huge amount of work there. I'm going to turn now to Ian. Um, and basically to ask about IE, IED's training's role in the projects. So what part did you play in this, Ian? Yeah, hi Heather, thank you for the warm welcome. Uh, just to really reiterate what Claire said, I, I, thought, I thought Claire gave a really uh, detailed sort of overview of the CAD system uh, and, and the component parts required to achieve those CADs. So IED are a, 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 an IOSH approved learning partner and we were asked to provide the safety and health uh, and safety health and environment for construction workers course. So one of the two elements uh, required to, to gain the green card. Uh, so that was our part uh, in, in the process. And how long have you been working with refugees, Ian? Well, again, Heather, my, my background is uh, HM forces. I spent 22 years in the uh, in the Royal Marines. Uh, yep. During that time, I've spent you know, I've been involved in numerous operations uh, in peacetime refugee support situations across the world. Uh, I understand the challenges that many of the learners have faced uh, to even be in that classroom to undertake these courses. Uh, were so were there any specific challenges with um, these trainees that you had to overcome? I guess the challenge is the main one, maybe language, but again, I think Claire picked up on that. The guys had such good practical knowledge and skills, and we had already gone approach IOSH to get some sort of dispensation around the time, the length of the course. So yeah. naturally, this would this would be a one-day course, but the 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 the, the various groups could either uh, do the course over two days or four, and that was mainly from a a language barrier. Uh, to ensure that the, the interpreters in the room were able to get the, the message across and the various learning outcomes. But again, uh, we, we, we felt it was pretty seamless all the way, you know, so right. we, we, we didn't see any major hurdles to making this work. We really didn't. That's because you're very skilled and competent. <laughs> you had a can-do attitude. Um, yeah, what other, um, what might the other applications for this qualification be like? Where else can they use this? Well, I, I think any health and safety qualification is useful. Uh, it can enhance any CV, uh, whether that's going into a role in health and safety or an addition to your existing work role. I, I see more and more people coming to us for training just to, as, as an addition to, yeah. their, uh, you know, almost to give them a wee bit of a competitive edge if they have a health and safety qualification. And, and I firmly believe that. Uh, the learners could now go on to do additional IOSH courses, maybe working safely, managing safely. They could go on to their NEBOSH level three, you know, and, and, and why not then progress to diploma level? Uh, so there's a, there's a full pathway ahead if they wish to pursue that. So how many um, people have passed the test that you've been involved in assisting? IED with... have run three courses in total and we have, we have 24 learners have gone through the training and all 24 have passed and they all now have their certification, which is fantastic. 
Very impressive. Um, and go, moving forward, how might other organisations support refugees to, accept, uh, to access this training? I, I think uh, Claire mentioned that also, uh, Heather, you know, IED, for instance, we're we are an approved learning partner with Skills Development Scotland. Yeah. So we, we have the capability of uh, offering the courses on the, the My World of Work uh, portal, which is accessible via the Skills Development Scotland website. And again, we can put locate various locations, various dates. And for those that are that those people that can apply that meet the funding criteria, that, that could be a, a pathway to, to allow that to happen. Very impressive. Thank you very much, Ian. A hundred percent strike rate there and doing great work. And it just means that everybody else can build on all the work that the two of you have done to get it to this point. So that's amazing. And I'm now going to come to Ahmed. Hi, hi, lovely to see you again. Um, I, you you said in the um, opening video that you had been in Dundee for, well, you've been in Scotland for two years. Um, can you tell us a bit about the challenges that you have faced in trying to find employment? Well, uh, the, the, the key uh, challenge is to be uh, a new to a new environment where whereby there will be uh, uh, some obstacles related to mainly to to the uh, sometimes related to the language barrier uh, not not i mean uh, exactly the the language itself sometimes even the, uh, the the accent from one side more importantly which is the uh, legal requirements and the certifications uh, and the skills needed and expected by by the this construction industry which is uh, i could say much more developed than the, the background we we used to uh, to, to work uh, there and be there uh, other than that also uh, legal requirements on on the type of the uh, of the visa we have the road that we have so uh, those are the key challenges that uh, have been faced and there are many uh, improvement and uh, I could say a window of opportunities uh, and networking uh, since we have joined this uh, amazing project. I'm, I'm, I'm very glad to be part of it. Right. Thank you. So quite significant challenges. Can you tell us a bit about what you did before, what your qualifications and experience were in the construction sector before you ended up in Scotland? Yes, uh, uh, I, I have worked in uh, oil and gas uh, industry, in, I mean for a construction company for uh, water treatment plant project in Yemen uh, as a, a civil engineer and, and a person in charge for uh, supervision uh, of construction works. And uh, I left Yemen due to the uh, instability uh, situation and went for uh, postgraduate studies. I did a master in construction management and uh, had the chance to uh, to get uh, uh, an Erasmus scholarship uh, program. I mean, uh, uh, I mean the joint uh, master program, uh, and and that that was the the second program in. Uh, in smart uh, cities and communities, uh, a new program uh, which has been developed by three uh, prestigious universities and uh, awarded by Heriot Watt University in, in Edinburgh, which mainly focus on, on uh, a course, a combination of uh, engineering uh, courses that uh, try to uh, uh, put emphasis on, on the six pillar of smart cities, I mean the smart mobility, the smart uh, environment and the smart people and as well as smart living and uh, smart governance. So it's like mainly focusing on renewable, uh, renewable energy and energy efficiency uh, as the key uh, focus of this program. So yeah. I have completed successfully that course. Uh, now I had... Uh, uh, a good uh, start to to look in into the industry get in touch with the uh, with the professional institutions including institution of uh, civil uh, engineering uh, which is of course has been all uh, recommended uh, and uh, su uh, i mean uh, suggested by uh, claire to like to uh, have uh, networking and uh, 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 
expand the skills we have and uh, in align with with the skills development is Scotland uh, and from there to just like ex ex expand the, the the boundaries and the main the, the main reason is to melt the ice and break the chains and the, the, those barriers in order to to be able to uh, uh, achieve the the, uh, the the minimum minimum requirements to enter the the construction wow. So phenomenal experience and skills and learning on your part and your English is fantastic, You're just amazing. So mm -hmm. it, I, I think it's that bit about, would you say that this course has helped you unlock the door into the industry? And so, like, if you didn't have that certificate, you couldn't get into the construction sector. Is that fair to say? Yes, it's um, fair enough. Uh, to be honest, th this uh, this th this course uh, like exceeded my expectations. To be honest, I thought in, in the beginning, yes, it's going to be about safety and construction and this uh, certification. Uh, uh, I started with uh, started in May with 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 Claire about the CSCS test and managed to pass the test. Uh, I mean, for operative test, and that was the starting point for me with with a goal to, to go for the management, I mean, the, the course for the managers. Uh, I, I have attended the, the, the course for the SMS TD, the Site Management Safety Training Scheme, and uh, we, we managed to, to, to pass that uh, exam, and I'm uh, in the process of preparing for the online uh, exam for this certification. Wow. Uh, I believe th this will, uh, Will uh, enable me to uh, to have uh, more opportunities in while application uh, and and yeah. to yes to unlock the and and what what are your um what are your aspirations for your career in Scotland I mean I'd like you to work in Dundee City and <laughs> sort of our renewables what are your I, aspirations I I would love to because I uh, I. Uh, uh, have this sense of belonging to uh, the community where uh, uh, I can find myself, uh, you know, progressing, improving uh, uh, many opportunities and and uh, comprehensive guidance are like facilitated in in a holistic way. To be honest, I I feel that very happy to like start from uh, and overcome the challenges we have, the barriers, and from there expand and 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 see what i mean what are the the uh, future uh, uh, career to go for well personally i would love to to uh, utilize my civil engineering background uh, uh, and also the new course uh, of smart cities and communities in 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 uh, uh, the the area of uh, building management uh, and, and innovation in related to renewable energy that i i believe that that, that site visit we had uh, we we had in uh, in uh, Michelin in uh, Michelin Innovation Park for for uh, Robertson yes. construction site and I was uh, I was uh, impressed to to see the combination of uh, infrastructure and the the smart facilities the smart uh, uh, this is what what I would like to see my myself working in and this is uh, yeah. at least a very uh, handled uh, uh, responsibility to, to give back to the community, you know, provide, providing all this for, for, for us as a, uh, refugees and as a... Uh, well, well uh, Ahmed, we can't welcome you enough. Um, yeah, I, 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 just to express my uh, sincere gratitude to uh, uh, Dundee City Council and to WEA uh, with other partners for, for you know, putting uh, all this in place and and you know, giving hands in 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 a very comprehensive and uh, over I mean, unexpected uh, way. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you very much for. for Thank you very much. Um, I think that's the three interviews. Of you can see that there are questions being posted. So I think my job at this point is to thank the three of you so much for the phenomenal amount of work you've done, and hand over to Kirsty to deal with the questions. Thank you again. Thank you and very much. And questions. thank you for steering us so well. <laughs> um, 
I would like to just echo what if Dominica from Fife, uh, one of our ESOL tutors, has put in the chat that thank you, Ahmed, your path is so inspiring and our learners could learn so much from you. And I would just absolutely echo that, that it's just such a privilege to have you with us. And um, you're such a, I think you've been an absolute delight to teach and your commitment to this process and to, um, to, to you know, to, to building your career here in Scotland is really, truly inspiring, I think. Um, so we've got a question which I'm actually going to um, pose to um, Archie and Claire. You can decide how to answer this. So um, it's the question comes from Hazel Black, who is an ESL tutor for Aberdeen City Council. And Hazel asks if there is anything already up and running in Aberdeen that she could participate in. And if not, how could they go about getting started with their ESL learners? Um, and this question is also echoed by Joanna from North Ayrshire, who's also interested in how she could get started with a course for her ESL learners in North Ayrshire. So. Uh, Claire or Archie, who wants to start? Thanks, Hazel. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll start anyway, and, and Claire can maybe add, add to this, but we're, we're certainly doing a lot of um, ESOL delivery in Aberdeen. I, I'm not sure if any of it's specific to the construction industry, probably not at this point, um, but the course has been developed and the materials are there, um, so it could, you know, could readily be delivered again, and that's what we're very much hoping um, and aspiring towards that other um, organisations will use the resources to deliver the course, or WA could could deliver it, or or other partners. So um, it would be great to great to speak more about that possibly at, at some point in, in the in, uh, near future. Thanks, Archie. Claire, do you want to speak a bit about the teachers book and how you've presented the resor the resources so that they can be accessed? Claire, you're on mute. We're not quite at the end of the project yet, so the resources haven't been given a platform because we're still trying to decide the best, easiest, most accessible platform for them, but they will be completely ready available for everybody to use um, for any course, whether you're setting up the course yourself, whether you can persuade your ESOL coordinator to um, incorporate some of this material into your existing courses. Uh, I didn't have time in my presentation to talk about the rest of the materials. There is a parallel introductory course at a low level to help people just come to grips with the vocabulary, get to grips with the vocabulary, and that's um, based around 10 lessons with dialogue. So that would slot very nicely into any um, elementary or beginner ESOL course. So the materials are available. It's really just, it boils down to funding and um, willingness to get this off the ground. So I think if you speak to your ESOL coordinator and just say that you would like, uh, you know, if you've got these people with these skills in your lessons, just say, I would, you know, like to do targeted teaching and these materials exist. And perhaps if you could get, if your coordinator can investigate along with the job center who has, um, you know, they have got uh, lists of people or their, with their skills, they should have anyway, on their on be able to refer people for a course of that nature or even advertise it. Kirsty advertised the course and we had quite a few people. We advertised the course in WA. So you will soon get a group of people together and the materials are there to be taught. They're free, freely available for anybody to set up um, ESOL for construction skills course. And if I can okay, just, just quick, quick, quickly add just uh, briefly, Kirsty, that you know, two of the courses were delivered online. Um, so you know you could have cohorts from across the across the country. So there's no no limit really, or you know, in, internationally. But you know this is this is just for Scotland at the moment. Um, so you know it breaks down the barriers as we all know over the last kind of couple of years with uh, through the pandemic that uh, online learning and uh, pipe you know, hybrid or blended learning is is a is a huge benefit. So this kind of fits in really well with that. So it, it can be delivered face to face or online. So there are various different options. Could I just answer Andy's question about mute, other? Oh. Sorry. sorry, I was just going to go. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> I'm on mute. Um, so it was just Hazel said, "What do we search to get the basic ten introductory lessons?" So just I'll just respond to that if that's okay. So Hazel, the project runs to the 30th of November, and after that point, they will be put on the internet and available for people to access. You'll be able to download them yourself 
or you could speak to a provider and see if a provider would do it for you. As well as a, the resources there are, we've paid to have professional audio um, recorded. The resources have been designed by a graphic designer, so they're clean and nice to deliver. There's presentations, there's reading material, there's a variety of different things. And Claire's also prepared a very comprehensive teaching pack with telling you how to and what and what to and all, all those things. The other thing that we're also pulling together is a report about the project, and we're not talking about that today, about some of the challenges that I think refugees face in accessing the construction industry, some of the barriers that exist within the industry itself, and some of the um, challenges in accessing training. One of the things that we will be putting onto that um, the report, and there will be a guide, it will be about how to contact people like Ian from IED training, We've met some of the most amazing training providers who, you know, have been so lucky to meet people who get what we're trying to do and have embraced it and understand the challenges that people um, face. So there will be a lot of material and information. So it will be a how to guide and I hope it will be very, very easy because this funding for the Scottish Government was a bit of a one off. But we need to make sure that there's a legacy of this funding and that wasn't just to be spent within this year. And so we hope there will be a legacy from that project. So sorry, I shouldn't have answered my own question. <laughs> so uh, Heather's put. Uh, so Heather, who was chairing earlier, has asked us, how do we ensure that more refugees are aware of this programme? And how do we ensure that the construction industry is aware of this work? And how can we help them to to be welcoming and open to placements. Lucy, shall I get you to answer that one? <laughs> Thanks. Um, I think making sure that more refugees are aware of this programme, that is, it's up to us, it's up to all the groups who are working with refugees. Um, you know, ESOL practitioners need to be telling um, people about it and the the staff, a lot of local authority staff work with refugees, so it's making sure that everybody in your local authority knows about it. The Scottish Refugee Council will be able to promote it. So any of the, the organisations that we know um, work with refugees, particularly refugees who are seeking employment, I think it's important that they know about it. The DWP, We've um, spoken a lot about um, them knowing about the materials. I think the part about ensuring that the construction industry is aware of the work and helping them to be welcoming and open to placements is perhaps slightly trickier. Um, I have found people that we've been working with, um, I've found some organisations have been fantastic. They absolutely get this. They get the bigger picture. They are incredibly supportive of the refugees and are very welcoming um, and trying to work along with us to provide placements and also um, to provide training opportunities. But I think that there are barriers there, and I think we need to keep this in the conversation. There are definitely barriers within the construction industry to getting um, not just it, the refugee community. I think that the, you know, anybody who speaks English as a second language or another language, um, it's it's wider than just the refugee community. And I think that this is something we need to, we need to keep talking about. We need people like Ian Clark and his training facility to be championing, you know, a champion for us. And, you know, we've worked with Rayburn Training Facility in Fife. They have been fantastic um, and really get that bigger picture as well. So I think it very much um, is a case of us, we need to get people on side in the construction industry and we need to keep that conversation going. Um, I couldn't agree more. I think that, I think it's perhaps not for this webinar here, but we will be pro producing a report about some of the experiences of this project. I think all of us were, aware that there were challenges for people in accessing new industries. I don't think that we were quite as, I think we were, we've been quite surprised 
by the challenges and the discrimination that exists within the construction industry. And I think that we need to um, reflect that. And I think that we need to be feeding that back. So we'll be looking to people like COSLA um, and the Scottish Refugee Council and um, the Fair Work Convention at the end of the project. Because I think that even though um, the project finishes on the 30th of November, I think we all have a role in um, championing this work and these skills it seems crazy that we've got people with that level of talent that you saw at the beginning of this um, webinar that are having to work night shift on zero hour contracts as delivery drivers for takeaways because they can't access the construction industry. So yeah. <laughs> that's my that's my comment. And um, I think it's the, the project, as is always the case with these projects, towards the end, they really kind of gather a lot more momentum. And I got an email just before I came into the webinar from uh, the Equalities and Policy Officer at STUC, and she couldn't make it today, but she's really keen to continue these conversations and to meet with us to, to go through it all. So these kinds of bodies will, you know, can, can really influence things and uh, make a big difference. So we'll, we'll hopefully arrange that meeting soon. I think as well, there's a role for, as, um, as you know, Councillor, there's a role for elected members. And I think that, um, I think we need to really unpick you know, and understand how how we can influence um, an an industry who you know they're they're not public sector, so um, you know, but we do we do have some power within that, and I I know that um, the, from the discussions that I've had with um, our convener that she's very keen to ensure, aren't you? <laughs> I'm speaking for you, guys. <laughs> But I know you're very keen that we do ensure that we support people to to use these amazing skills, people like Ahmed. Yeah. Um, do we have any more questions? Does anybody want to pose a question? Okay. Um, I think, does anybody else from the panel want to come in on that there? No? Okay. Um, so I think that all, all for all, all that leaves me to do is um, I'm going to actually ask um, Heather if that's okay. Can I leave you with the with the last word um, because you opened it so beautifully, and I'll ask you to close it too. But thank you to everybody who's participated today. Um, yeah. So as an elected politician, it's been a real pleasure to find out about all of this work going on, and a part of our job as politicians is to make sure that we help people fit the jigsaw together, make the links, um, because there's no point in you doing all this amazing work if we can't extend it across the whole of Scotland and it shared the learning. Um, so we can't let it slip um, and, and need, we need to make sure that we're communicating about it and ensure that this becomes mainstream, that all the refugees have an opportunity to access this training and similar types of training if need be, because we need them here and we need them to be working and we need them to be bringing the amazing skills they have um, and applying them here in Scotland, because we've got a lot of work to do. Um, so thank you very much for these first steps and hopefully this will just grow and grow. Thanks for everybody's time this afternoon. It's been a real pleasure to find out about this.